They said, make some crack. It'll be easy. Come on down. Have a good time. No problem. They were wrong. Sit your $5 ass down before I make change. All right. All right. Nino, I got it. I'll sit down. Especially after the... (laughs) <laughs> the wonderful uh, challenges that we had making this recipe. And I, I'm dead serious. It was, uh, I thought I looked at the recipe. I thought, ah, there's no way this is going to be a big deal. Um, and not one, but both David and I um, <laughs> encountered some serious issues here. And, you know, it's it's one of those things. It looks good, but <clears throat> when your 12-year-old who has the metabolism of a 12-year-old and can down two cheeseburgers or two deluxe burgers with no problem, and looks this thing up and down and says, eh, it's not bad. It's kind of a, uh, you know. So we had a lot to review, David and I, and so I'm going to bring him in now. <laughs> and we're going to go through this this wonderful recipe that we did this week and, and talk about what it's like to make some crack. Okay, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, uh, yeah, you got your beads on. I, I Look, I Bowser took my beads yesterday, and I'm screwed. So, <laughs> um, so you know, after last last week's episode with Spuddy, you know, I'm thinking, ah, oh, this guy makes it look so easy. You know, he just whips stuff together. He's talking, yeah. he's checking everybody, you know, and he's like, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? And I'm going, how the hell is this guy doing this? You know. By the way, oh, yeah. check in if you're if you're watching, check in because we'll we'll put you on the screen. But yeah. <laughs> It was, uh, and and then I looked at the recipe for this week. Oh, and, you know, I want to make a public apology right now. See, David and I, <clears throat> we communicate throughout the week, but we don't spend a whole lot of time necessarily talking about the next show. We, we have some things that we may kick around, and then we decide what we're going to talk about. The uh, the problem was is that I got into a groove the other day and I decided, well, we're going to do crack. And <laughs> I got a text message from David going, I guess we're doing crack this weekend. I was like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so I wanted to apologize for not looping you in before I put out the uh, the trailer. But yeah, it was it was uh, my my creativity got the best of me, especially when I started throwing in the New Jack City clips and stuff like that. So yeah, well, that's all right. I mean, it wasn't that. Uh... In theory, it wasn't that difficult of a recipe to uh, throw together and find the components for. Right. But uh, I guess you have to leave crack up to the professionals. So. <laughs> yeah, that was... Um, well, anyway, so we'll get into it. Yeah, this is... Uh, you know, we, there's a lot <clears throat> to cover, but at the same time, there's not. You know, the recipe itself is very straightforward. You know, it's just simple ingredients, simple process. Mm-hmm. And I don't know about you, but I thought that <clears throat> when I got into the boil stage of the toffee mix, I had everything. It was like, it's moving smoothly, no problem. Oh, yeah. And then that's when everything went sideways, you know, oh, yeah. and the butter started to separate from the toffee mixture. And yeah, so. You had kind of given me a heads up right. without detail that it was going to be, that it's not quite as easy as you were thinking it was going to be. Correct. And so. <laughs> I was still winging it. I mean, I made sure I had all my ingredients. Right. And, um, and so I, I set about it. And like you said, it def- and you'll see it in one of the video pictures, um, within the first minute of boiling, the, uh, the toffee mixture is beautiful. Yeah. Um, my younger daughter said something like, man, you, you know, she thought I was making bananas foster, which I hadn't made in like 10 years, but she right. remembers the, the smell. The smell very, of it, yeah. Very s- similar at that point. Yep. And, um, you know, the directions, which we'll go over in a bit, uh, you know, you sit there and then you turn it up a little bit and this is on medium high heat right? for the instructions. And all of a sudden it goes from like, if you were, imagine if you're trying to make the perfect roux and you're going along and stirring and all of a sudden it goes from peanut butter color to just dark black and everything <laughs> separated on yeah. it. I mean, that's like, it's like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. And um, It happened very quickly. <laughs> yeah. And my stove... We've got a flat top stove and yeah, uh, yeah, we've had there. it about five or six years now, maybe not quite that long, but it tends to burn uh, or cook a little hot. So I was very cognizant of that mm-hmm. uh, potential. And then yet all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, 
maybe that's just the way it looks. But then when I put it on top of the crackers and it just went everywhere, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and yeah, and then the uh, then I guess you'll get into the other parts of it too. Yeah. But so so honey, if you're watching, see, I wasn't the only one that was a problem child with this recipe because she's she's giving me advice. I actually stopped in the middle of my video recording and I'm like. This ain't right. <laughs> you know, this is not, <laughs> something's wrong here. And, you know, she she gave her her suggestions. But I think at the end of the day, I, you know, I immediately started looking at, you know, reconstituting butter into the toffee mixture. I started, you know, doing all this research and everything. And meanwhile, they got the cameras running. And uh, that's one of the reasons my one of my videos is not ready yet is because yeah. I got a lot of editing to do um, to cut out the, the crap, so to speak. So, um, yeah, so the, we'll, we'll definitely get into it. But the, the recipe, it, it, I don't I don't think it could be simpler, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you do two sticks, of, two four ounce sticks of butter or one eight ounce yeah. of butter, right? Yeah, uh, I did. I made sure that I only did a half recipe. Just because I still got some sweets left over from Christmas that I'm trying to get whittled down, so I'm glad I I erred on the side of <laughs> being conservative with the amount. Yeah. yeah, let's see. We've got the uh, cup of like brown cup sugar, of brown sugar, yeah. a teaspoon of cinnamon. Yep. Right, and that yep. is your toffee mixture right there. Right, there's nothing mm -hmm. else. You melt that down. You pour that over the crackers. Now, I, 40, 40 crackers. saltines crackers, right? So yeah. that's, I, I yep. went and got my Nabisco crackers. You know, that was, I, I know this changed a long time ago, and, and this is how old I am, but I remember going to my cousin's house, my other cousin, one of my other cousin's houses, uh, and yeah. those uh, saltines used to come in tins, right? Oh, yeah. and, and you could store like Legos and Lincoln Logs and stuff like that in there. And now it's just mm -hmm. the, you know, that's while well, it's modernized, you know, it's probably pathetic like, thin box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, don't get me started on the wrapping that tears all the way down the side. But yeah, I feel like one of those old get off my lawn, you know, <laughs> but so, so that, you know, that was, that was the, the gist of the recipe. Of course, well, not you to had, mention the top. Right. Yeah. Right. And the white chocolate, mm -hmm. that was interesting. And yeah. then of course the, the sugars. Now the sugars for me were a little bit more, logistically complex than yours but just from a cost point they were stupid priced aside from that i mean what could be easier right you 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 pour this toffee mixture on top of crackers you throw it in the oven you let it cook for seven minutes you pull it out you put mm -hmm. some melted white chocolate on top and then you put your sprinkles on you cool it down boom you got cracked yeah <laughs> so um, I I wanted uh, let's see i'm gonna I'm gonna put you up on the screen so you can talk about your wonderful pictures here this was your finished product correct uh yeah and one of the angles of it but yeah, yeah it's kind of a top-down <laughs> angle right so yeah um so this this was i mean i mean actually it looks it looks better than mine and you'll see mine in a second but i mean it doesn't look half bad it just kind of looks like a flat king cake right yeah like a king cake fell off of the uh got stuck in the parade and got run over <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's let's uh let's roll your video here because i thought th now this is this is ingenious and it, i say that because i tried to buy colored sugar and it was stupid expensive but you just used some food coloring that you had right to make your yeah i actually looked at a uh i did a quick google search because last year rouse's had them on sale yeah and i went and i couldn't find them so uh, I had food coloring when I was doing my Hubble's hearth that we use for cookies. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it was it was pretty simple. I don't know if I had done that method before. But there's the other ingredients you were talking about for the toffee mixture. Yep. And that's what mine looked like. And that looked like I was thinking, man, this is good. Yeah. And then I didn't get a after shot, but then there's the white chocolate. Yep. But you put in the microwave, and this it says stir every thirty minute, thirty seconds. And after yeah. the first thirty seconds or so, it was just burning. Yes. Yeah. You could see how my toffee had burnt and separated. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, and so, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> you use the, <laughs> okay, yeah. sure. Why not? Just <laughs> pound the crap out of it. And, it's, and that's how you get. Yeah. So I, I don't think mine was as burned. We'll take a look at mine. Actually, no, now I'm looking at it. It did look 
pretty awful on the bottom. Um, but I think it's what happened was that the butter actually seeped through the, the in, in between the, the crackers, right? And yeah. burned, cooked the bottom of the crackers by, you know, heating up like that, yeah. right? So Yeah, because I think if, if it would have stayed together and been just a thin layer on top, like it was in theory supposed to be, right? Uh, you, you might have got some oils that came out, but I don't think it would get that, it would cook it, or burn it like that. Right, right. Now, did you taste yours? Yes. Yes, and, I have. And? It's not the worst thing I've ever made or messed up. Um, <laughs> it does have a uh, blackened flavor, but not the, in the way that you want. There's a burnt sugar notes to it. <laughs> I'm going to caramelize sugar. Positive. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Over caramelized. Uh, over caramelized. Yeah. I went back and I, I actually dumped about half of the burnt white chocolate out and, and just put it into my microwave for a little bit longer and put some back on top, which I think probably helped save it some. Yeah. But as far as when other people uh, that I've had uh, their, a Christmas crack that they make and, and other office party type things. I would give theirs obviously an A and this was probably, I'm thinking about a C, C, C minus. Well, okay. So to be fair, I, I would say that you and I are pretty good at following recipes, right? Especially yes. when it's our first time out doing something, we try and fe- file or, or uh, follow it to the extent that it makes sense given our setup. Sometimes setups are mm-hmm. different from kitchen to kitchen. We get that. Yeah. But this is one of those cases where <laughs> I don't care if you follow the recipe or not. It it ain't coming out good. It's just not. No. No. <laughs> I, I mean, do follow it. This is what we got. I mean, so you know, we've both made stuff from very simple Yes. mixtures that we've used within the last several months that were, you know, we both agree those things turned out wonderful. And I know independently, we've definitely made things in the past that were more complicated. I mean, I make right. Leah Chase's gumbo Zerbs. I don't know, maybe there's some crack, uh, I don't want to say dealers, some crack <laughs> uh, manufacturers out there uh, who can give us some tips, but I think we've come up with some on our own anyway to uh, suggest. Now, that recipe you showed me uh, yesterday on text, that was through your daughter's book, right? When she told me, because she she saw the the result, and she (laughs) said, well, that book I got's got got a Christmas crack. Now, this Christmas crack and some others that I have seen um, actually kind of differ from what I have looked at, but it's basically the same premise. Ones I've really seen, uh, at least in, in the office parties that I've been to, it's been a white chocolate. So maybe just because of seasonal with Christmas that they use that white chocolate instead. But um, so, I'll have to find, I don't, yeah, go ahead. Well, no, I, so, okay. So I thought, you know, <clears throat> uh, white chocolate, high fat content should, you know, render and, and liquefy yeah. pretty easily. I, I couldn't believe, I think after 30 seconds, maybe after 45 seconds, it would have been perfect to spread on the the crack right? Uh, in this case. But in the uh, other recipe that I was sharing with you from the, the, the guy who's got the old, uh, got the cookbook, right? all he did is he took that hot toffee mixture and put the chocolate chips on top. And that was enough to just melt it and spread it. Right. Well, so, so that's, that's one potential suggestion. Hmm. Well, it, so the other question comes in. Okay. So how, how do you properly melt this, this white chocolate? Right. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. let's take it step by step because I, I want to analyze this and break this down. The, the first issue that we have is the separation. Right. Yeah. That's the, the butter toffee mix separation. Mm-hmm. Okay. My wife seemed to think that I boiled it too vigorously and that caused the separation. What would your analysis be? Yeah, that's possibly the case. Uh, cause I noticed that it said medium high, right? Or medium or medium high. And then it moved up for the, for like the last two minutes. Right. And in his older recipe, I actually think he had it on high the whole time, but the duration was almost the same amount of time. 
uh, the, huh. the thing it states is you, you melt all those ingredients together. Once you get to that melted state, you don't stir it. And right. It's like two minutes, it boils. Right. And so I would think that, which I guess, I mean, if you're really scientific, I guess you could use a, a, a candy thermometer to, to figure out what the optimal temperature you need to be at. But it, like right. we were saying, I mean, it didn't take much time from the, the video you showed there to where it went to the dark side. Because, yeah. I mean, it was like, <laughs> it was like seconds. Yeah. That, I mean, and then all of a sudden it went from, because you could see it was already boiling there. So I guess my recommendations would be is to, I would definitely cook it to where it melts yeah. and maybe just starts to uh, simmer, if you will, in that case. There's got to be a color definition or something like people use, like Spuddy had with the Rubo right. uh, last week, right. that you right. ought to be able to say, you know, when it gets to this color, take it off the heat right, and, and then spread it over the cracker. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 for me, I thought my mistake was I pulled it off and I was showing the camera and I, and I kind of took my spatula and I, I stirred it and instantly the butter and the toffee just separated. I could see it just happen. I mean, it was instant. So mm -hmm. my thought was, okay, you don't agitate it at all. You just go straight from pulling it off the stovetop and then dumping it on and, you know, hopefully everything stays together. Right. Yeah. And maybe that could be it because when it got dark, I mean, I lifted it up off of there because I didn't want to stir it, but there was a concern because you could start smelling the, the burned sugars. Mm. And so my concern was that now all of a sudden I don't want this thing sticking and burning on there. Right. And so right after the, the allotted time, that, you know, I had pulled it off maybe 20 seconds or 30 seconds early, and then I may have stirred it right before pouring it over. But it was that se sort of thing. As soon as I poured it on the crackers, it just yeah separated and went everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you could tell from the coloring that it was doing that, but in the pi uh, pan. So I don't know. I would just think less heat would be something worth trying. Because then again, what you do is, you, like you said, you put it in the oven, 400 degrees for seven minutes. Yep. And in his recipe, uh, it was like 350 for seven minutes. Right. So that would be another thing I would think I would try to lower that heat. Yeah, because the, the crackers oven. definitely did toast. But not, I mean, only where the toffee mixture kind of seeped in between the two did it yeah. really get dark. But but the crackers themselves are kind of more like a golden brown color right now. I mean, they almost look like graham crackers now. Yeah, they do. They do. Um, and we'll take a look at that and I'm sure we'll sample. Um, uh, so I use the, I use the, the, the pralines as my gold. And of course I have the purple and then the green and, you know, you can see, like I picked up this piece, you can see underneath, right? So yeah. you see where the seams of the crackers are, right? Mm -hmm. And, and then you see the crackers themselves are really, they're not burnt at all. You yeah, know, no, yours uh, look good. Well, like I said, my daughter said, eh, it's not bad. Uh, so anyway, th this this is how it turned out. Fairly happy with it, but I haven't tasted it. Like, you know you know how it is when you, you taste something after you've been kind of tasting, tasting, tasting. Your mouth, especially yeah. when it comes to sugars or spices or anything or salts, your, your palate gets shot real quick. So mm -hmm. this will be my first time tasting it with a... A fresh palate, clean, a virgin yeah, palate. palate, a cleansed palate, <laughs> a yeah. cleansed palate. Yeah. Well, it's I mean it's muddled with some coffee, but um, so yeah. I mean I, I, I guess you know we'll give it a shot. But then the going back to the the white chocolate, you can see yeah. that it is a little bit more of an off white color. <clears throat> that is probably what I would say is is what you're going to get if you're doing it in the microwave. Yeah. And I think what you need to do is is instead of going full power for 30 second intervals, you need to go lower power for a bit longer and slowly yeah. melt that down. The other way around that is to do a double boiler setup, right? Um so oh yeah, and and, and as a byproduct of the the doing the proline mix, I actually ended up buying two probably mixes. And so what I ended up doing is I took, you know, the Mom Papal's recipe says one cup of pecans for yeah. 
the, the mixture. So I put two cups in and coated every single pecan with the proline okay. mixture. You know, what I was thinking is maybe what I could do next time is to lay them out on a rack and then just pour the molten yeah. proline sauce on top of them. And then it just, it'll cake, it'll evenly yeah. distribute on the pecans. But yeah, I, mm -hmm. I thought, oh, I'll just stir it all together and then, you know, just lump it and then spread it out. And that was, yeah. So the upshot is, is that I was able to recover somewhat and make, yeah. you know, so I had the proline mix and so I was able, those proline still turned, they turned out just like we did them last time. I was also trying yeah. to get rid of the the, the uh, evaporated milk, which turns out can go bad. It was borderline, you know, yeah, it, yeah. It, it was starting its turn and yeah. I wanted to catch it. And I figured if I boil the hell out of it enough, it'll, if there's any kind of little buggies hanging out in there, they'll, they'll, yeah, yeah. they'll not last. I wanted to uh, kind of switch gears here a little bit and talk about mm -hmm. the boucherie that's oh, yeah. taking place. Yeah. February 24th, 2024 at uh, White Oak Estate and Gardens in Baton Rouge. Chef yeah. John Fulce's, what do you call it? I'd just say premier location, but it's his, um, it's, it's a, not just a wedding venue, but it's a meeting venue. The place is, uh, is gorgeous. I mean, you know, it goes back. It's, it looks older than it is, but it's really back around the 1970s. The, the gardens, I think it's like, I don't know if it's 30 or 60 acres. It's really kind of nestled right off the interstate in the back of a kind of a little subdivision. He's got a little, what they call it, potage, a little small uh, house garden out there uh, where he's usually cooking, or I mean, uh, growing different type of um, Louisiana vegetables and herbs. There's three big fire pits outside or, or chimneys or whatever you want to call it, hearths, um, yep. where he'll do the you know, uh, a, you know, a split a cochon de lait or a split, uh, hog or sometimes a red snapper. And so you walk in the, there's like, so the big house that you don't necessarily go into, but you get to walk over there and you see eight different stations. And at each of the eight stations, you have groups of what he's calling butchers leading the, uh, demonstrations of how to make the traditional, um, dishes that you would find at the boucherie. John has done for the last uh, several years is that we start off with a butcher's prayer. And the last three times he actually has the Bishop of Baton Rouge there leading that prayer. Huh. And so okay. there is a lot of reverence and respect for the animal that is done at the beginning. Right. And then at these eight tables, you can actually watch the, the butchers break down the animal. If you're working these side tables, like I've worked in the past, what you'll do instead is he's he's got his uh, his kitchen staff and his sous chefs and his his students from the uh, John Foles Culinary Institute at Nickel State University helping, and so you've got a big ice chest that has all the ingredients set up and the recipe and uh, all your sous chef needs have been taken care of. But he encourages you to say, you know, if, if you want to do a little, if you want to deviate from the recipe, go ahead and do that. You know, you don't have to stick to it, but part of right. it is you're demonstrating you know, what a, what a, a typical South Louisiana boudin is going to be made. And the deal is, is from eight to 12, we're working those tables and we're stirring the pot. People are coming up, we're talking, we're sharing with them the history and the uh, basics of that recipe. And then at 12 o'clock, they'll put a big long table out and everybody will come and you get a, pl I mean, it's, I say it's basically all you can eat because there's way more food than any person can. I mean, you can go through that line three times and there's still be plenty of food. You'll get the jambalayas, you'll get the white beans and rice. Well, that's, I mean, it looks, it looks really cool. I mean, I, I'm, I, I just seeing the video, it's a very interesting process and something that I've never seen personally. And, yeah. and I think it would be, really interesting to see that because we talk about a lot of these things in, in the show. I think it's also important that people understand, you know, this is where their food comes from. And yeah. whether it's a hamburger or it's a, you know, short rib or if it's, you know, a pulled pork sandwich. And I think, uh, if anything, there is a deeper respect for the process oh, when yeah. you go to something like this than you would if you were 
if it well, if you just don't, never was exposed to it. There's always sort of the interest in doing it. And sure. like I said before, you got some of your, like some of like the gumbo police, you got the, you've got some of the boucherie uh, naysayers that are going to say, well, oh, it's, it's too much fun. They're having too much fun. There, there's too much music. You know, there are other boucheries as we talked about out sure. uh, in Lafayette and uh, in the Cajun prairies that you can go to that are open to public with tickets. You know, with the sausage stuffing, for example, I mean, if the real 100% boucherie where you're taking that particular animal you're working on, uh, if you're going to stuff the sausage, you got to stuff the case. You got to use the casing, the in different, the different, uh, the andouilles and the boudins and the, the cracklins. And so everybody's got a task. And by the end of the day, everybody gets a little bit of something. If it was your, if it was your hard hog, you get the choice pieces to keep. These were done also in winter months because there was no refrigeration. As an attendee, though, you you were fed, you were well fed, yeah, and you get yeah. a chance to talk to everybody at their stations, yeah, and <clears throat> and and that's that's a so is that a is that a day long thing? Is it or when does the public let in? Typically, public starts getting there about eight o'clock, and okay. they start feeding you from about twelve to to one, and um. And yeah. you're right. Uh, you know, eighty five dollars is a is a you know pretty decent price from a standpoint of, you know, somebody might say oh, that's a lot of money. Well, yeah, but like I said, believe me, from the food quality and quantity that you get, right? Um, you get the variety. You're walking the grounds, like you said. You get a chance to meet Chef John Fols, and sometimes he'll have some other chefs who have come in. Um, there's been other other people that I've seen that uh, have have gone on. You see them on certain uh, Food Network yeah. type of things. Um, Tori McPhail, who was the chef at Commanders, was there one year. Uh, so you you'll get to see uh, folks. Um, Vance Vokerson from New Orleans, who I was telling you about, does the Creole uh, sausage. His family has been a has been the only vendors at the Jazz Fest since its inception. His oh, father okay. helped kind of create, and he's he's there, and that man is a wealth of knowledge in in uh, Creole New Orleans history and Creole cooking. Is he and the teamwork are... makes the dream work guy? Is that the that's, one? You're yeah, he's that's yeah. him. That's okay. Him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. was very uh, very animated. Yeah, very animated. So yeah. you will learn. Uh, you know, if you go around and you and you talk to somebody, you know, if you have questions on how to do that, do these different things. And, uh, for the most part, a lot of the folks that he's had recruited over the years have been the same one. So they've all kind of learned the same sort of things. Now you may have a guy from Chicago or something making and Dewey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, like I said, you, you can find enough people there that, uh, have experiences and I enjoyed it from the standpoint of having people come up to me and telling me what they did as kids and what they remembered. That price is still to me a bargain and you know, you get the what is that, eight hours roughly. You can be there for eight hours, you can eat, you can meet people. Um Yeah, I mean where else can the... you go for ten bucks an hour? I mean, it's just not even Yeah. yeah. And, and and get fed, you know, a, yeah. a, a hefty meal. So the you now he also I, I noticed in one of the Bayou Wild episodes, he uh also has uh, I believe his own bourbon now. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Yeah. So the other uh, thing that he's really gotten into for the last about the about the time the the first boucherie he did, he started his own little distillery. The uh, it's called Jones Creek Distillery because it is on the the property backs up to Jones Creek there in in Baton Rouge. He's made several different batches of things and they've been aging. And I think he's just released is a bourbon after three or five, three or four years. I had an opportunity to have a, a sample, uh, he had one time. It's so, a, it's a neat setup. So yeah, you get okay. to see that too. He, he does tours. He uses it also kind of as an educational opportunity for his students from nickel state to come and visit. Right. And see how some of these old systems were set up. And so there'll be like every three hour, maybe once every other hour, every hour, there's somebody giving a talk on the distillery or all these different things. So in addition, I mean, like I said, you get a, a, a continuing education course that <laughs> you're well fed for that day. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more about that. I, I, I would, uh, that, that's definitely an experience that, um, 
I hope to be able to participate in at some point. All right. Well, that was great. I, I'm really looking forward to the boucherie. I'm looking forward to everything that that's coming up in the coming months. There's a lot of things that, uh, this is, I mean, we're, we're starting a new year and, you yeah. know, combined with what we did with Spuddy and the things that we've got kind of laid out in front of us, I think we're going to have an exciting, uh, winter and spring. So, yeah. uh, for those of you who have tuned in, thank you very much. And are catching us on the replay. Uh, feel free to drop us any messages on YouTube or Facebook, and we will be happy to answer them anytime. Thanks a lot, and take care. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh, that's right. Get that little button for that. <laughs> there you go. Our store is officially open for business. That's right. Our Rainy Cajun merchandise store is now open. And we've got some cool stuff. As a matter of fact, we just dropped our Mardi Gras collection for 2024. We've got some cool stuff in here. Of course, we've got prints. you got to have those prints. You know, they're going to mark the start of the season and have one to collect each and every year. These are limited edition. These are only for 2024. Uh, we also have hoodies and tees coffee cups for those early start parades and then wine tumblers just in case some jack wagon bumps you on a parade route you don't go cracking your your drink all over the place pillows for the kids and of course bags for your beads so get on over there right now order up your stuff use code mg2024 to get 15 percent off on your order and we'll see you later